Hi YouTube, welcome back to another episode of Knives and Beer. Today I'll be drinking Flying Dog, Snake Dog I guess it's called, never had it, it's an IPA, uh, and I will be talking about what features I look for when I'm buying a knife. So I'll start by cracking this open, and I will be using the ADV Tactical uh, the guy that makes the butchers and a couple other styles of knife. Never used this to open a bottle, so see how it goes. Huh. Worked pretty well. So I'm a little different, I think, when it comes to buying knives. I am pretty picky on what knife I buy and I see a lot of people online they'll buy a knife um, they'll just go on Blade HQ and they'll order something and it'll come and if they don't like it they'll kind of mess around with it for a day and say oh it's not really for me so it's for sale and they'll put it up for sale and everything I've never uh, I've never sold a knife every knife I've bought I've pretty much loved there are a couple knives like my CRKT shenanigan which is I think I bought it for $24, so no real reason to sell that, even though I don't really carry it too often. Um, but every other knife, I've never really felt the need to sell. And I've had people offer me uh, to buy some of my knives. The Browse, I just got an offer a couple days ago to buy it. Um, I've never really took anybody up on them because... Uh, just don't really feel the need to sell them, but I feel like I just get kind of um, kind of picky on choosing, and I research and kind of make sure I really want it. So um, let me think. The the uh, GPB one from Kaiser. So I think I remember seeing this in probably January or February. I saw. A picture of it that they're making it and I got really excited I was like oh man I can't wait for that to come out and I waited like just looking up every picture I could um, if they released any news like constantly following it to see when they released it um, looking at the specs the materials everything the price I saw that it was gonna be about 200 some dollars so I was like okay I'm ready like right now whenever it shows up online or somewhere I'm ready to buy it like right now so that's kind of just how I am I don't just see a knife and say oh that looks pretty cool and buy it like I I kind of take some time to buy it make sure I want it and it's always worked out I've always liked all of my knives that I've gotten so a couple of the things that I look for um, as you can kind of see in the video or in the frame right now titanium 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 Titanium, titanium, same there, titanium right there, and titanium. So most of these are titanium. These aren't all my knives. These are just kind of the the ones I love the most and carry the most. So uh, other knives like the Griptilian, still love this. It's kind of more of a work knife for me. Take it out camping or I used to... Um, carry it every day while I was mowing lawns, or not lawns, but mowing parks and cutting weed whacker string with it and held up nice, but not something I carry every day um, compared to these, just titanium feels so good in the hand, I love the titanium frame locks, I love the look of it, the feel of it, um, I've never had one fail, all of them have pretty good lock up, this one kind of has a little tiny bit of lock rock and a little later lock up, but other than that, I've had a great experience with frame locks of all all these different kinds. So um, definitely my preferred thing is to look for a frame lock, but that's not a um, deal breaker. Out of all these features I'm going to talk about that I really look for, I wouldn't say any of them is a deal breaker. There's a liner lock, and I love the way that feels functions great, the lockup looks good, 
hasn't moved since I think probably the day after I bought it. It kind of moved and settled into its spot and hasn't moved in a couple years. So, so if there are multiple different features on a knife that I don't really like, um, then I might not buy it. But if there's one thing, like I like bearings, so these have this has bearings, that, 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 might have said that already, and then that, those all have bearings. I think that might have ceramic bearings actually, which feel really nice. So I'm definitely a fan of bearings. I prefer bearings. That's really what I want to look for when I buy a knife. But if it doesn't have bearings, like uh, like this Strider has uh, frost for bronze washers, it also feels great. It's smooth. I know it works. I don't think I have any knives with Teflon washers. Um, this Utilitac 2 possibly has Teflon washers. Not sure if it does. They're really smooth and I know they work also. So that's not really a deal breaker. But I look for bearings. Um, you can see most of these are flippers. So I look for flippers and especially if they flip nice. Like I said, I kind of take my time and wait a while. I don't buy a knife when it first comes out usually. Um, I go to the local knife store, River's Edge, and um, flip some, feel them, uh, get a like look at the size and how they feel in hand, and that really makes my decision on whether I want it or not. Because there are some knives, um, they don't flip as well as others, and it kind of doesn't ruin it, but this one flips fine. Sometimes you get that, and you get kind of a, a half flip out of it. The detent isn't super strong. That was before ZT really uh, upped their game and made a... A lot better of a detent. This is even, uh, I think, a year after that one came out, probably. So still not even to where they are now. And the detent got a lot stronger. Feels a lot better. Uh, it just feels higher quality when the knife flips out and you have that nice detent. So uh, I really like the direction they went um, by working on that, making it more uh, of a strong detent. So look for that. Obviously, I look for premium materials other than just titanium. I like uh, I like steel and everything. G10 is great. The G10 on this Boker feels just as good as the G10 on this Strider. And this Strider is $300 more than that Boker. So, if it's used on a $400 knife, that's pretty good quality probably. And it's really nice to find it on a cheap knife, around 90 some dollars, I think. But titanium is obviously my favorite. Um, sculpted pocket clips, another thing that's not a deal breaker, but a cool thing to see. One annoying thing is when a knife maker works so hard on a beautiful design like this pocket clip. Really cool angles, you can see all the different kind of directions that the, it kind of looks like it's flowing almost. It's not just a flat milled pocket clip, it kind of comes down here and down there, all rounded. You can see the mill lines in it left there. And then you go and walking around at a restaurant and scratch the hell out of the pocket clip. So I've done that a few times and that kind of gets annoying um, when you have such a such a nice designed pocket clip and then you scratch it up and everything. Knocked that over, sorry about that. Another great design and you can tell I didn't really ruin this one or anything. Cool designed pocket clip, works really well. Looks great, matches the design well with that acid washed finish and everything. Um, and even normal spring clips they're fine, not a deal breaker, but it really shows kind of the quality and kind of an extra step that a 
uh, knife maker or knife company takes when they they do a 3D pocket clip. Some of the spring ones, so this spring one has one screw in it. This is a Riot uh, Hills. You can kind of move the pocket clip back just because there's one pin, uh, one screw right there holding it in. It's recessed down in the titanium so that it's supposed to kind of hold it down in there but didn't really work out um, entirely. It still holds it great. doesn't wobble too much or anything. You can't really tell unless you push back and forth on it but two screws holding it in obviously works well. I think the best thing to do when you're buying a knife is to just go to a knife store, hopefully there's one near you, and just hold a bunch of knives, hold a bunch of different options in your price range, and kind of get a feel for which one's best. Um, kind of compare the materials, um, what type of flipper, what type of bearings, or uh, washers, or anything. A lanyard hole is something that really uh, doesn't matter to me at all. Some of my knives have lanyards on them. I think this might actually be... Oh, no, I got... My Endura is, I think, my only other one. And that one, okay. So I think I have three knives with lanyards on them left. Used to have a couple more, took the lanyards off of them. Uh, I have a couple lanyard beads that I really like that I'd love to put on a knife, but there aren't really any knives that I want a lanyard on right now. So, that's not really a big deal breaker for me. Um, flipper or thumb stud or anything, or spidey hole. Oh, I forgot this knife is kind of seized up from... Uh, what did I do? Oh, got that all wet with creek water, but here's another spidey hole. So whatever the design of the opener, it's fine with me. Kind of just a little picky toward flippers because I just love flippers. I love flipping knives, kind of just messing with them. Uh, I'm sure you guys probably like that too. Something to fidget with other than a fidget spinner, I guess. Um, the original fidget spinner, maybe. Good beer, by the way. So yeah, you can see a lot of similarities between kind of the knives that I carry most often. Uh, a lot of titanium, a lot of um, frame locks. So I kind of stick to the same thing. Some of the knives I'm looking at buying soon are the GTC Zero Tolerance collaboration. So I really like that design. Um, the Kershaw Natrix, I love that just because of the story going along with it. And the subframe lock looks really cool. I uh, can't wait to get my hands on that, kind of hold it, see how it actually feels. I know it's going to be a cheap knife because it's Kershaw, but looks like they probably executed it pretty well. Um, the Kershaw GTC collaborations look really cool. There's a couple new G10 Spydercos that look really cool that I'm going to check out. So, a lot of new knives I'm looking for. Um, a lot of uh, Wii knives, Wii knives um, that are either G10, the cheap ones that are about $100 or exactly $100, or the titanium ones that are in the 300s. Both of those are just great options whether you want to go the budget route or kind of the more uh, expensive route like Kaiser and HEA designs. So definitely going to be checking those out in the future. They kind of hit all of my um, preferences so I know they're great companies and make great knives so I'm sure I'll love those uh, let me know what your guys' preferences are maybe what you hate that some knives have uh, maybe you hate aggressive jimping that's not really that aggressive but maybe you hate aggressive jimping or maybe you hate knives that have no jimping at all so let me know in the comments let me know if you agree or disagree with anything I said. Uh, go check out the other videos on my channel and the other three episodes, I think, of Knives and Beer. 
Thanks for watching. Tune in next time. And I'll see you then.